Hi, it's John from Android Addicts, and today I'm doing a thermal comparison test between the Exynos Galaxy S21 and the Snapdragon S21. So I wanted to just check to see which of these two phones heats up the most whilst doing certain tasks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through an Antutu stress test and then just a standard Antutu benchmark. We're then going to do 10 minutes of 4K 30 frames per second video recording with the main sensor. And then we're just going to do 10 minutes of Genshin Impact to see how they both compare. So you may wonder why I've got this black tape on the two phones. And after doing some research into these thermometer guns here, basically the experts say that if you put a bit of black electrical tape on the object you're scanning, you'll get a much more accurate reading because there's less reflections from the material that you're using. And as these are two different colors, I wanted to make sure that the results were as accurate as possible. So the reason the location of the tape is there is because that is the hottest part of the phone when it does get warm. So basically the gun will be pointing at around this location here for the tests. And what I'm going to do is just tape the trigger down. I've got a mount to mount the gun in a certain location like this. And then the phone will be in this stand here, which has not got anything touching the back or anything. So we can actually determine the exact temperature coming off the phone during the tests. So I hope that all makes sense. So let's go on with the tests and see how they compare. Okay, so the first test I did was the Antutu stress test here. So this just maxes out the phone for 15 minutes to see how hot it gets and also the battery drainage but also lets you monitor the different cores of the CPU. So this is sped up, so obviously you don't have to watch the whole thing, but if you do want to, you can slow down the speed of the video and monitor it closely. But basically I'll just wait until the end of the test and we'll just have a look at the results. Okay, so we can see a peak temperature on each phone now. So the peak on the Exynos was 42 degrees Celsius, which is 107.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and 43 degrees Celsius on the Snapdragon, which is 109.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so these graphs are the most interesting part of this test, obviously, just so you can see what the actual results were in the background. So we can see the Exynos on the left there has quite interesting CPU performance graph where it looks like most of the time it's spent under 80% utilization. Compare that to the Snapdragon on the right though, and it was at least 80 most of the time, if not more. So that would suggest a bit of throttling maybe, and that can be seen in the chart below, where the CPU cores, you can see the clock speed there, the Exynos is up and down all over the place, which would suggest throttling. But the Snapdragon however is just sat there, maxing out at the best it can for each of its cores. So as an example, the Snapdragon has a core which can run at 2.84 gigahertz, and you can see that the top line there for the Snapdragon is running, I would say, at about 2.84 gigahertz. Whereas the Exynos supposedly has a single core which runs at 2.9 gigahertz, but we can see there's, you know, the three gigahertz doesn't even appear on the chart because it never even got close. So it's a bit of a shame to see that it is being restricted so much. I did have the Thermal Guardian enabled on the Exynos, but that obviously didn't make a difference as it was still being throttled quite badly. But it is interesting, if you look at the Snapdragon chart again, you can see, like I said, the one core running at 2.84, you've got the three cores which run at 2.42, which is the line below, and then you've got four cores which run at 1.8 gigahertz, and they're all working pretty much spot on as they should be. Well, a few dips there, but I'm guessing that's just when it starts loading up a different test. But yeah, the Exynos cores are all running at around about two gigahertz, sometimes going a bit above that and often, you know, just hovering around that, if not a bit lower. You can see the sort of bluey green colored line there is running less than two gigahertz. And considering all the cores are meant to run at at least 2.2 gigahertz, that is a bit of a shame. Okay, next up we ran the Antutu benchmark, just a standard benchmark here. This version 9.0.1-OB does actually have some new tests in it, so it's quite nice to see. 
There's a very kind person in the comments pointed that out in one of my previous videos. So this runs the brand new test on both phones. So let's just go through and see how they get on. Okay, so we had a peak temperature there on the Exynos of 42.1, 107.7 Fahrenheit, and on the Snapdragon, 41.2 and 106 Fahrenheit. So not much between them, to be honest, a degree or so, but the Exynos is still being beaten by the Snapdragon here, as we would have expected anyway, by about 33,000 points. So next up, I did the video recording test. So this was the camera recording a 4K 30 frames per second video, just on the main sensor, just to see how hot they got. And it's quite interesting, keep an eye on the Exynos to see the temperature increasing somewhat more than the Snapdragon. Now it did start at a slightly warmer temperature compared to the Snapdragon, but as the test runs for 10 minutes that gives both phones enough time to warm up to the maximum temperature they're going to get up to. So we had a max of 39.6 or 103.2 on the Exynos and 35.4 or 95.7 on the Snapdragon. So the Snapdragon really does run a lot cooler whilst recording videos compared to the Exynos. It's not something I'd noticed whilst testing, you know, just normal testing. But as we can see here, those are the results and it's quite interesting that the Exynos is about four degrees hotter than the Snapdragon in this test. Okay, this last test, I wanted to run Genshin Impact because that's probably the most taxing game on Android currently. So this is set to the highest and 60 FPS on both phones. And what I did is I set up an app to just swipe the screen every half a second, because that would then keep the CPU and the GPU maxed out as much as possible, which is what would be happening obviously when you're running around the uh, environment. Now sadly on the Snapdragon, each time I ran this test, and I did try three times, the camera would then slowly move upwards into the sky which if you watch makes the GPU temperature decrease quite a lot. So you see me picking up the phone and readjusting the camera. Nothing to do with the Snapdragon itself, but it's, uh, it's just something to bear in mind. It got to around 38 degrees before the camera decided to look up into the air. And by the time I spotted it, the test of 10 minutes was already up pretty much. So yeah, there's a slight difference there in the temperature, but the Exynos was always going to get a bit warmer than the Snapdragon in this test, as it had done in my previous tests. Right, so here's a roundup of all the results, and it is quite interesting really to have a look through and compare them. I'll just run through them again, and I'm just going to go through it in Celsius, as you can see. the I've put the Fahrenheit degrees there as well, just in case you use Fahrenheit. But basically, the temperature difference between them is pretty minimal, to be honest. The only one where there was a big difference here was in the video recording. Other than that, there was just a one degree difference here or there, pretty much. So yeah, video recording is the main difference here. Not sure why the Exynos got hotter. As you've probably seen in my other tests though, the Exynos does stay quite cool when you're playing well-optimized games. So Genshin Impact, like I said, it was really more of a stress test than anything else, but it was quite interesting to see. I've put some links down in the description in the top right if you want to check out the other gaming tests, because the Exynos does normally, in general, stay a bit cooler than the Snapdragon. But in Genshin Impact, it never has done and this is just more proof that it, it still doesn't even with this March update installed. So these were things that could improve obviously with further updates down the line but this is the kind of temperatures you can expect as of now. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did please click like button and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. If you want to become a member of the channel click on the join button that really helps out and leave any comments you have down below as to whether these are the sort of results you're experiencing. Not everyone has a temperature gun to measure the temperature but if you are experiencing any overheating issues, let me know down below, as it is quite interesting to see how other people's phones are behaving. So again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.